I'm sounding a bit grumpy tonight, but one of the worst things that has happened to us is that we're losing the ability to disagree with someone without now wanting them sacked or punched or abused or treated like a leper or even killed, ruined in some way. And a lot of this shift is actually coming from the left. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. And worst of all, from opinion leaders of the left that expect something better from. Latest example, J.K. Rowling. She's given huge pleasure to millions and millions of people with her Harry Potter books. You know, where good children fight evil. Very moral books, actually. Should be congratulated. But then she said, well, actually, I think transgender women aren't the same as women born women. And women born women should now and then have their own spaces, particularly in things like sport. So now, the New Statesman, which is a magazine that for years was very serious, the Bible of the left, Paul Johnson was once, once its editor, has run a huge rant against her, calling her Britain's nastiest novelist, despite all the charity work, and also called her a liberal pariah and much more. Now, luckily, it got so much grief for that, it's now changed that headline a bit, but not the picture. Joining me on Culture Wars is Rowan Dean, editor of The Spectator Australia and host of Outsiders on Sky News every Sunday at 9am, except for every Sunday so far of this year. These guys take long holidays. But he's here. How are you, Rowan? <laughs> when are you, when's your show back? <laughs> Back on Sunday morning, Andrew. We are back with a vengeance, stronger, better than ever. We need a little break just to sort of take take stock of the world and see what was out there. Sunday morning, we'll be there, 9 a.m., Andrew. Don't you worry. I know you never miss it. And you're, you like you're one of our greatest fans. No, I, 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 don't, I, I never miss it. I never miss it. And you would have had a lot of aggra aggravation build up over that break because the world really is spinning wildly on its axis. Now, this, uh, Absolutely. This hit job on J.K. Rowling. Now, this is by one of the most serious magazines of the left-wing thought, or it was, your reaction. Yeah, well, it's funny, isn't it? Because uh, the uh, once J.K. Rowling uh, made the uh, you know the absolute crime of suggesting that women are women and and men are men, that was it for the left. They had to abandon her. But there, there's nothing the left hates more than one of their own who who who, uh, who, who kind of bells the cat in this sort of manner. Uh, and uh, the, what really upsets uh, the left about J.K. Rowling is she, she was so popular with children, courtesy of Harry Potter. So they had to denigrate her, uh, and even we saw the actors who made their, their, their fame, their money, their wealth, uh, their celebrity out of appearing in J.K. Rowling's films, they also attacked her, which just shows you that the left, uh, their loyalty is always to the left ideology. It's never to uh, individuals or people who have helped them along the way. But what is fascinating about the article in The New Statesman, The New Statesman, yes, it's a, <laughs> it's a magazine of the left that does that, uh, I guess they could call it The New Stateswoman or maybe they could call it The New States Transgender Woman because that like would then that. take us back to The New well done. Statesman. Well done, well done. Anyway. cause confusion. <laughs> exactly. But they, here's what's funny about the article, Andrew. They go into how nasty and terrible uh, J.K. Rowling is, and they, they kick off by being appalled that she wrote under the... or appearing to be shocked under, uh, that, they, that she wrote under the pseudonym of Robert Galbraith. In other words, she identified as a man to write her first adult novels. <laughs> you would have thought they would have loved this. Surely this is a great thing to be true. But, oh, no, oh, she hid, you know, behind a, a pseudonym. How dare she? And then they go on to the fact that she's obsessed with paedophiles, rapists, murderers, criminals, crooks. She's a crime writer. That's what crime writers do, Andrew. And the left are all in a tears because here's this person who, who was obsessed with writing crime novels about criminals and about weird people with different perversions and things because that's what readers of crime novels want. But this makes her incredibly nasty and as yet always the left can never separate the artist from the individual. Classic example. Oh, dearie me. Wait till they get to Agatha Christie. I mean, heaven forfend. But Rowan, <laughs> That's right. I've been thinking what a country looks like when it's attacked its own culture for years, has attacked the Western notions of beauty, erecting all sorts of monstrosities. It's lost any common idea of what it itself is, you know, the thing that attracted people to come to it. And then the Victorian government showed me 
exactly such a vision with this latest tourism ad for the state. Now, Rowan, Rowan you actually won prizes for your own work as an ad man. I noted that when reading your best-selling novel, uh, where you are likely disguised <laughs> as a top ad man. Tell me who this <laughs> ad would attract. Here it is. There's something a bit different about yeah. Victoria. Just a little bit different. Victoria. Every bit different. Rowan, who's that going to attract? <laughs> well, clearly they're after the, uh, you know, pink-haired mob, the cafe latte, kale-eating crowd. Um, they claim that Victoria is a bit different. There's plenty of other places in Australia that can boast their uh, progressive inner-city uh, uh, coffee crowds. Um, but what amused me about this uh, ad, Andrew, is uh, they start off with the claim that there's, you know, there's something a bit different about Victoria. Well, this is true. And it's always good to have an opening line that hooks you in because, you know, and a credible, believable line. Uh, but what they then fail is to deliver. For example, where is the scene outside the cenotaph with rubber bullets being fired at people simply for protesting about vaccines? Where are all the shots of those beautiful uh, kind of progressive uh, modern scenes of people uh, delighting in uh, the absence of uh, public housing to, to, to live in doorways in the CBD. I mean, that's, you know, that's uh, Melbourne's right up there in the vanguard of, uh, of offering its open spaces to the homeless crowd and, and seemingly being incapable of giving them any public housing. Uh, and also, no trip to Victoria is complete, uh, Andrew, without a visit to the NGV, the National Gallery of Victoria, where uh, you learn, for example, it's some of Australia's greatest painters and artists back in the 1800s, when they were painting idyllic scenes of beautiful bush and Indigenous Australians uh, yes. enjoying uh, by being by the river or whatever it was, you then have a note next to the painting telling you that the painter back in 1860 got it all wrong. <laughs> he didn't know what he was looking at. In fact, there was a massacre further down the river, and that's what he should have focused on rather than this idyllic paradise that he painted. So you also have an ability in Victoria where the uh, curators of your, uh, of your galleries and museums are so far-sighted and foresighted that they can actually look back into the past and tell the painter what he should have seen when he was doing his painting. It's an amazing place, Victoria. This is progressive mystery. Australia at its very best, Andrew. So, uh, you know, take the ad, run with it, Victoria, and let's see, uh, let's see who it attracts. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. We've got so much lovely artwork here, and they picked, I don't know who that was, I think Paul Puccini or something like that, uh, some hideous monstrosity that you've got to look at instead of a street or something like that. It's just terrible. And pitched at hips of dudes that have got no money anyway, you know, instead of people with a bit of money and taste. Rowan Dean, thank you so much for, indeed for your time.